Ward 52. Nurse A was reading her patient's case notes when suddenly her ward sister called her in for help. Though her ward sister reminded her to log off from her account, Nurse A forgets to do so. Nurse A ran into sister's room without logging out from her account. At the same time, there came another nurse from a different ward to pass some case notes. She noticed that the system wasn't locked. Thus, Nurse B started to browse through one of her friend's case notes as her friend was happened to be warded in that same ward. Confidentiality, privacy and security of health information have always been at the forefront of health record or information, professionals' duties and responsibilities. The words confidentiality, privacy and security have often been used interchangeably. They are three distinct concepts. Confidentiality is the obligation a healthcare agency has to ensure the patient's right to privacy is respected by limiting the disclosure or improper use of information without the patient's authorization. Privacy is the right individuals have to control how their personal information is handled, that is, uh, their right to determine what personal information is shared, when, how, and with whom. Security is the administrative, physical, and technological safeguards a healthcare agency has in place to prevent accidental or intentional disclosure of personal health information by inappropriate access or by unauthorized individuals. It also includes the mechanisms in place to protect the information from alteration, destruction, or loss. Mr. Tan Awe, a patient at XYZ Hospital, had his HIV blood screening done and his reports were up. Since the doctor had the original copy, Nurse A decided to discard the extra duplicate copy away. Nurse A failed to discard the patient's documents in a proper manner. A curious stranger who was passing by happened to see the nurse throwing something into the dustbin and thus he picked up the paper from the bin. What was even worse was that he tweeted about the patient and his diagnosis. The healthcare holds amounts of sensitive and confidential data. One of the biggest increasing threats to organizations is identity fraud, which can have a significant impact and cause long-term damage to an organization and its clients who are trusting their confidential data to them. As such, it becomes vital that confidential information is correctly handled, stored, and destroyed. Types of Threats and Vulnerabilities to Data It was medications from Nurse A was browsing through the doctor's order in the electronic medical record when his computer got hacked. He was shocked and helpless. Importance of data security in healthcare. There are different types of computer security threats. The classification of the types of information security threats is made on the way the information in the system is compromised upon. There are the passive threats and the active threats. The passive threats are very difficult to detect and equally difficult to prevent as well. Then there are the active threats. Since these threats continue to make changes to the system, they are easy to find out and fix as well. Virus is the most common type of cyber threats. They infect different files on the net computer network or on the standalone system. Most people fall prey to the viruses as they trick the person into taking some action like clicking on malicious link downloading a malicious file. Worms. This is another type of internet security threats. They are actually malicious programs which take advantage of weaknesses in the operating system. Like the real worms in real life crawl to move from one place to another, similarly like the worms in the cyber world which spread from one computer to another, from one network to another. The most prominent feature of the worm is that they are able to spread at a very high rate, which can lead the system of being at risk of crashing. Children. Children is another type of computer virus. 
which is discussed as the guts of a friend. So they will make their way into the software and may not be noticed. Next is rootkits. Rootkits is a job to give cover to the hackers. The best or the worst part of the rootkit is that they are able to hide themselves from antivirus software as well due to which the user is not aware that a rootkit is present on the system. This helps the hacker and he is able to spread malware on the system. Next, cookies. When we visit a website, there are files due to which website is able to remember the details of the computer. They are more of a threat to confidentiality as opposed to the data on the computer. In most cases, cookies may be stored on the computer without the consent of the user and data may be stored on them, which is passed back to the website server the next time one visits the website. The data gathered may be sold to third parties and depending on the interest, which may lead to different advertisements flashing on the screen. A vulnerability assessment is a systematic approach used to assess a hospital security's posture, analyze the effectiveness of the existing security program, and identify security weaknesses. The basic process of a vulnerability assessment first determines which assets are in need of protection by the facility's security program, then identifies the protection measures already in place to secure those assets and what gaps in the protection exist. Finally, the assessment measures the security program effectiveness against valid security metrics and provides recommendations to security decision makers for improvement. In essence, the vulnerability assessment assists hospital security decision makers in determining the need for additional security system, equipment upgrades, policy and procedure revisions, training opportunities and manpower needs. Vulnerabilities are opportunities for crime, for rule-breaking violations and opportunities for loss. A vulnerability is a weakness or gap in a security program that can be exploited by threats to gain unauthorized access to an asset. Vulnerabilities include structural, procedural, electronic, human and other elements which provide opportunities to attack assets. When healthcare security professionals continue to update and expand their threat assessment with events such as natural disaster, avian flu and terrorism, the primary threats that continue to impact hospital assets include ordinary crime, unauthorized access, and patient abduction. For all of these threats and others, the vulnerability assessment objective are to maximize life safety, protect assets, and maintain continuity of operations. To meet this objective, a comprehensive and robust security program must be in place to address the unknown and unknown threats that exist both outside the hospital facilities and also inside. Critical issues about deploying RFID in healthcare. Since RFID systems make use of electronic magnetic spectrums, like Wi-Fi networks or cell phones, they are relatively easy to jam using energy at a right frequency. Although this would only be an inconvenience for consumers in stores, it could be disastrous in other environments where RFID is increasingly used, like hospital or military in the field. Also, active RFID tags, those that use a battery to increase the range of the system, can be repeatedly integrated to wear the battery down, disrupting the system. RFID reader collision occurs when a signal from two or more readers overlap. The tag is unable to respond to simultaneous queries. System must be carefully set up to avoid this problem. Many systems use an anti-collection protocol, also called a singulation protocol. Anti-collection protocol enables the text to take turns in transmitting to a reader. RFID tag collection occurs when many tags are present in a small area. But since the read time is very fast, it is easier for vendors to develop systems that ensure the tag responds one at a time. Security, privacy, and ethnic problem with RFID has been reported. The content of an RFID tag can be read after the item leaves the supply store. An RFID tag cannot tell the difference between one reader and another. RFID scanners are very portable. RFID tags can be read from a distance, from a few inches to a few yards. This allows anyone to see the contents of your purse or pocket as you walk down the street. 
Some text can be turned off where the items has left the supply store. RFID tags are difficult to remove. They are difficult to remove for consumers because some are very small, less than half millimeter square, and as thin as sheet of paper. Others may not be hidden or embedded inside a product where consumers cannot see them. New technology allow RFID tags to be printed out on a product and may not be removal at all. RFID tag can be read without your knowledge because it can be read without being striped or obviously scanned. Anyone with an RFID tag reader can read the tag embedded in your clothes and other consumer products without your knowledge. For example, you could be scanned before you entered the store just to see what you are carrying. You might then be approached by a clerk who knows what you have in your backpack and can suggest accessory or other items. RFID tag can be read in a greater distance with a high gain antenna. For various reasons, RFID tag reader systems are designed so that the distance between the tag and the readers is kept to a minimum. However, a high gain antenna can be used to read the tags from much further away, leading to privacy problems. RFID tags with unique serial number could be linked to an individual credit card number. At present, the universal product code implemented with barcodes allow each product sold in a store to have a unique number that identify the product. Work is proceeding on a global system of product identification that will allow each individual item to have its own number. When the item is scanned for purchase and is paid for, the RFID tag number for a particular item can be associated with a credit card number.